Hello, this is Volunteer Voice from Connect the Soul with your weekly soul wisdom for the week of the 21st of May 2018. Wow, well, as you probably realized, I was not able to do a weekly um, soul wisdom for you last week because I was in Bali and I've only just returned from, I think for me, was probably one of the most powerful um, transformational retreats that I have facilitated in all the ones that I've done since 2012. It just seemed to be deeper and and more transformational, as I said. So uh, it's taken me a little bit of time to get back and sort of ground myself and and here I am. So this morning uh, before uh, recording this I, I really wasn't sure what I was going to talk about and so I was guided to go back to um, one of the original things that I started this with and that was the Law of Attraction um, cards from um, Abraham Hicks and, and you know Esther and Abraham, so I I did that and I came up with wonderful um, guidance I guess which um, we'll we'll talk about. So the first card that I picked, which well, they fell out together actually, um, was just a wonderful card. And, and if you remember, I really like these cards they have great energy i work with energy i feel everything so it feels good and then I, you know i kind of rub it and i go get yeah, that feels good so i'll read this to you because i think it's really important because it says my life story and the law of attraction and so what i'm going to talk about today is the stories that we regurgitate in our um, in our heads in our minds and it is those stories that create perceptions and that create perspectives in life and belief systems that don't always serve us. And I think it's really, really important that we start to um, notice those stories and we start to identify them and then we start to be really discerning about whether those stories are serving us or not. So let me just read what this card says because, you know, I think it's really powerful. It says, each and every component that makes up your life experience is drawn to you by the powerful law of attraction's response to the thought you think and the story you tell about your life. Because we all, we all, you know, have stories about our lives. Your money and financial assets, your body state of wellness, clarity, flexibility, size and shape, your work environment, how you are treated, work satisfaction and rewards. Indeed, the very happiness of your life experience in general is all happening because of the story that you tell about it. Wow. I don't know if you realize just how true that is and how powerful that statement is. I'd like you to question what stories do you tell about your life? One of the things in the, that we do in the retreat is to go very deeply into um, seeing the difference between the story we tell and our authentic self underneath that, which is struggling because of the story that we hide behind. And so as you then peel off the story, then you come out with the authentic self and let me tell you, your authentic self is bigger and more beautiful and more peaceful and certainly in a greater state of well-being than you can ever have a story about. So, so the second cut, you know something that I noticed every time that I sit down to do this, I get an itch just there. I don't know why. But in case you've noticed, that's what I do. I just realized that I do that almost at every video clip. I suddenly have that little itch exactly in that spot. don't know why. None of it matters. The subject of money is really two subjects. You see, what happened was that I picked that card uh, about the stories we tell and then as an example, the second card is beautiful because it says, 
the two subjects about money, because money is one of these things that we as human beings have been conditioned to have fear about, to have all sorts of stories about, right? So it says here, the first one is money, plenty of money. And the second one is an absence of money, not nearly enough money. Often people assume that because they are speaking the words, I want more money, they are speaking positively about money. Sorry, that's not the case. When you are feeling fear or discomfort as you speak, you are not speaking of the subject of money. You are speaking of the subject of not enough money. And the difference is very important because the first subject brings money and the second holds it away. And that is for everything. Everything. If you speak about illness and you say, I don't want to be sick. But you see, the universe doesn't understand language. It only understands the energy of the language. So if you are saying, I don't want to be sick, what energy are you radiating? You are putting your energy onto sickness. You are not putting your energy onto health and well-being. If you say, I choose to be healthy and vibrantly fit, then the universe can respond to that. But if you say, I don't want to be sick, which is usually what people say when they're not, when they're not feeling well, then the universe cannot do anything other than bring you back the same energy, which is that of feeling sick. You know, and it's a really fine line, and it's also very difficult for us to be able to go beyond what is right in front of our face and what and that which we desire. So that takes practice. You know, I keep telling you that these things about that we need to raise our vibrational frequency to whatever it is we desire. So if I look at that in the case of money, money is plenty of money. Well, you know, yeah, we can say, look, I, I always have plenty of money. But if in the back of your mind there's a little, little, tiny little doubt, or you're just pretending, right? If I say that often enough, but if underneath I say it because I'm terrified of not having enough money, then the fear of that underneath one is going to bring about what you don't want. So it's, it, you know, with, with the law of attraction, I think one of the things, the unsaid things about it is the trust of that. You know, the understanding that how this universe works. Do you know, if you, um, let's say that you put, oh, okay, we're making ice cream apparently. Let's say that you make your own ice cream, right? You put in the ice cream and you put it in a freezer. And because you have a really good freezer, you don't, um, you have no fears or worry about it. You know, it's going to take X amount of time. And you put it in, and then, you know, several hours later, you go in, and you do expect it to be ice cream. Most of the time, it is ice cream. But if you worry about it, and you say, I hope, I hope it's going to be ice cream, guess what happens? You pull it out, and you say, I don't understand. I did exactly the same thing. And this time it didn't work. I, do you know, I sometimes I watch uh, these cookery competitions. Uh, and recently there was one like that, right? And they had an ice cream maker. They put everything together as they always do and put it in the ice cream machine and just it just would not make ice cream. But you know, they kept looking at it every five seconds saying, Oh, I do hope this is going to set in time. I hope it's going to set in time. I hope it's going to set. Because it didn't set at all. We create with our energy. Please understand that we are not creating with our words. We are creating with the energy behind the words. So, if you can get your energy and your vibrational frequency to a place where you absolutely trust the law of attraction, the same as you know, it's not about trusting the law of gravity. You know that if you drop a pen, it's going to fall. Excuse that, that sounds very loud. You just know that because you've seen it your whole life. 
just because no one ever showed you how the law of attraction actually works, what you send out energetically, it's the same. It doesn't matter whether you believe in gravity or not. The pen's still going to fall. So it doesn't matter whether you believe in the law of attraction as such. And, you know, it's a crazy, actually crazy term. It's not a law of attraction. It's a law of cause and effect. That's what the law of attraction is, right? The law of cause and effect. Whatever the cause of the energetic vibrational frequency, the effect has to respond. Just as when you drop the pen, it has to fall to the floor. Cannot do anything else unless you're out in space where there is weightlessness. As we're not yet out in space, the law of cause and effect is still operational. Whether you know it, whether you believe it, whether you, whatever, it is going to work. So the more that you trust it and the more you understand it and the more that you practice that, the more it's going to give you that which you radiate consciously. And, and because you understand it, you are really vigilant about the energy you radiate. So you talk about, I, I feel remarkably fit and healthy. You know, I've just come back from Bali and it's really interesting because we do a few fairly physical things while we're there. One of them is um, we, we climb, we go down a, a beautiful um, ravine and we meditate in, in the middle, at a river and, and sit in rocks in the middle of the river and meditate. And it's absolutely just, just magical. It's like a, you know, cathedral of nature. But it's quite challenging to go. Going down is not so bad, although it's not easy, but it's, it's doable. But going up is quite challenging for a lady of advanced age, as they tell me I am. Um, but, you know, I just did it so well. And I climbed up these huge rocks in the middle of the river, and it was just phenomenal. And why? Because I, I just knew that, that I was meant to do it, and and therefore I did it, and I do believe that I had some, you know, some power that was supporting me, but it never occurred to me that I wouldn't do it, right? It never occurred to me. I was leading a retreat, I was leading people, and why would I not do it? I wouldn't take them there if I couldn't do it. So it's a matter of your state of mind. It's it's knowing that you this incredible body is a self-healing mechanism. So see yourself as healthy and vibrant. Or do you believe that because you're getting older, bits have to fall off? Well, if that's your belief, then bits will just have to fall off. I don't have that belief because I don't really have, want to have bits fall off. <laughs> I have a belief that I can stay fit and healthy. And that as long as I support my physical being um, to be that, it will respond. I don't believe that um, I have to struggle anymore. You know, struggle, gosh, I've struggled in my life like most of us. But, you know, some years ago I just decided one day, you know what, no more struggle for me. And I won't even struggle to open a jar. I won't. If the jar won't open after a couple of bits of effort and I call on the powers that be to give me some help, then I obviously am not supposed to have what's in the jar and it goes back in the cupboard. That's it. It's easy. No more struggle. It, it's, it, that doesn't mean you put, don't put effort into life. I put a lot of effort. But it's effort that comes with ease, you know, that is supported by my strong belief systems and my perception and perspective. So just consider your life and look at in what area that you don't have everything that you want. Is it in, in your relationships? Then look at how what's your story about those relationships. If you're single, what's your story about not having love in your life or having a significant other? You know, if you don't feel you have enough money, what is your story about that? What are you actually saying about money? What are your beliefs about money? Examine them. And then, you you know, then you have to transform it to what kind of belief do I need to have for that to be ease and grace for me? 
you know, if you um, if you're looking at your um, I don't know what I just what I actually we we did money, we did relationships. What about your health? Look at what your health and fitness is like. What are you, you know? What's your story about that? What about your relationships in general, your friendships, you know, your community, you, anything in your life where you feel you're not having what you would really like, where you don't feel that you, that you can go home and go to bed every night and be incredibly grateful for all the gifts that life has given you for the day. If there is anything in your life that you feel that you wish you had but you don't, Examine what's the story you run about. You know, really, really important. We changed a few stories <laughs> during our retreat um, recently. And, it, and for me, the joy of the work that I do is to observe as people actually throw away their stories and replace them with a different one. And how that changes it just changes everything from the inside to the outside. It changes everything. If you are running a story and you've repeated and repeated it simply without recognizing it, then start paying attention. Start paying attention when you are in conversation with others and they bring up a topic and you join in and you just start to speak. And then you listen to yourself and you realize, go, why am I saying that? Is that really what I want to draw into my life? Because sometimes we speak just to break silence. I don't do that. I'm happy with silence. I really am incredibly happy with silence. It's in the stillness that you can hear the truth. So being in a place of stillness, you can connect to your soul like never before. But if you constantly keep chattering, your mouth is always going and you feel that you have to be in conversation all the time, you cannot hear your intuition, your inner teacher. You cannot hear, you know, that wonderful knowingness within you, the soul wisdom that is awaiting you. You can't hear it if your mouth is going all the time. So be more silent, become more of an observer and, and really understand how this all works. It is just so magnificent when you suddenly have that awareness and it goes to that critical mass, as I call it, where it goes, click, oh, that's how it works. Yes. And then it starts to flow, right? So I guess this week is all about Checking the stories that you run about your life and then adjusting those stories so that you get what you desire. Yes, what a great idea. So I also picked a card because I usually um, pick an angel card every day for me and because I've been busy and in Bali and I didn't take my card. But, you know, I always feel that I travel with angels. I have this real sense that I have a whole band of angels that travel with me and that uh, take care of me and, 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 you know, always make sure that I'm okay. And so I truly believe in that. And, um, and so it seems to be true. So I picked a beautiful angel card to see, you know, to get confirmation and to get some extra oomph to, to, the topic of conversation that we're having today. So it says, beautiful card. Okay, let me see if I can hold it up so that you can see it. Right, how's that? Release and surrender. Do you know release and surrender is just, wow. You know, it's that song from Frozen, let it go, let it go. Let it go. Anything that feels uncomfortable or resisting something, let it go. It's just not, you know, honestly, let it go. Life needs to be free-flowing. So it says release and surrender. Now, of course, these are the angels talking. We shower you with blessings of our radiant love. Open your arms and release the challenges that you've held 
tightly gripped within your hands. If we hang on to this, you know how hard we hang on to our beliefs. But are you sure that they are serving you? Let them go. Open your hands, arms and heart to our love and assistance. Hey, I'm always opening my hands and my arms to receive love, support, health, abundance, well-being. I am open to receive it. And because I'm open, my cup overflows and I share it with you. So, I'm back on deck and I hope that today's topic of checking your stories is going to serve you well. And of course, I love getting comments from you and responses and some of your stories that you might like to change. I love to hear from you. And of course, all of my teaching um, you can find underneath in the um, description box are all the links to my website, to my Facebook page, to Instagram. And of course, um, if you would like to book in to a truly transformational, and I mean truly transformational retreat, seven days in Ubu Bali. The next one is not until May 19th, 20, May 16th, 2019. But you've got to hurry because I only take a small group. And I'm so looking forward to doing it all over again. Okay, have a great week. Check your stories. Change the ones that don't serve you. Love yourself more. And from my heart to your heart, namaste.